Arlington's town manager, Adam Chapdelaine, is resigning his post after 10 years on the job. He says he wants to rest, recharge, and refocus as he decides the next chapter in his career. ACMI News has an exclusive interview. The first wings of the new Arlington High School opened earlier this week, marking the end of phase one of this major project. So what's been finished and what's phase two looking like? AC My News takes you on a guided tour. A man is arrested in Arlington after it was found his vehicle reportedly wasn't registered nor insured properly. What police say they found inside the vehicle was very concerning. We have an update from Arlington Police straight ahead. And taking a dip into a dunk tank full of cold water outdoors in freezing temperatures. What are these people thinking? There is a method to all this, helping children who live a half a world away. ACMI News starts right now. From McLennan Park to Spy Pond, from Poets Corner to the Mystic River, we have Arlington covered. We're your neighbors, a friend you can turn to, giving you stories that count from people who care. Dedicated, determined, dependable. This is ACMI News. A major story to tell you about. Arlington's town manager, Adam Shaftelaine, is making it official and resigning as Arlington's town manager after serving this town for a decade. Hello, I'm Drew Weisberg. And I'm James Milan. This announcement comes after Mr. Shaftelaine just negotiated a three-year contract with the select board in December. In this extended interview, ACMI News spoke to Adam Chapdelaine about his plans for the future, what lies behind his decision to step down, and he offers a heartfelt message he has for Arlington residents. Here now is this exclusive one-on-one -on -one with town manager Adam Chapdelaine. When did you come to this decision that you were resigning your post here as uh, town manager? So, I mean, I would say it was over the course of the past month through conversations with my wife and a couple close personal friends and confidants. Um, and ultimately, it's a really tough decision. I know I've thought about leaving a couple times in the past for other opportunities, but as I looked at coming out of the pandemic, hopefully, um, and I look at my youngest son uh, entering kindergarten next year, and you know the combination of the stresses of this job that is a stressful job even in good times and is certainly a stressful job in tough times like we've had over the past couple of years. Um, and my desires to do you know potentially new and different things. Um, I came to the tough decision to say, you know what, I think I need to close a door before I can open the next one. And ultimately, you know, I'd sort of set an artificial deadline of making the decision by March 1st. And I got there and made the decision to pull, you know, to pull that proverbial lever on March 1st and, and let the board know. You have steered, uh, since I've been here, uh, the last three years, you've steered this town through some pretty tough times. Uh, we had the controversial uh, Lieutenant Pedrini case, obviously, which uh, had to take its toll, took its toll on everybody. Let, let's face it. Also, without a doubt, the pandemic uh, was huge. Uh, and also, we have a new high school being built, which is changing the skyline of Arlington. That's a lot of pressure. Did any of those variables or any other variables uh, make you come to the conclusion that you came to? Sure. I mean, it's it's all part of it, right? The, um, certainly issues around Lieutenant Padrini and race and policing in general have been very stressful for for me and I'm sure for many across the community, for, for residents of, with concern and for police officers, right? A very challenging set of circumstances. Um, the pandemic, that was obviously stress worldwide, right? We all had our own yeah. version and dealing with significant stress from the pandemic. Um, and then I, I think, you know, I would say this job, if you're doing it right, in a lot of ways can be a 24-7 job, right? And I'm not saying that I'm getting woken up by calls every night by any means, but, um, you know, you're on, right? You're on, you're getting, you're receiving incoming texts and emails and calls in the evenings, on the weekends. And, you know, that, that I, I think that wears on anybody, if they're being honest with, with you. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, that I, I'm... I want or I'm expecting a much slower life in the future. Um, but I think the pandemic has given me the perspective that I need to appreciate the time that I have more thoroughly and a better understanding that nothing's promised. 
So, and you know, I'm, I'm in a circumstance where I have young children and you know, they're, they're rapidly aging as kids do. And I want to, I, I want to figure out if like I can take this opportunity to maximize time I spend with them while I'm young and healthy. Um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully I have a good long life ahead of me, but um, you know, wanting to be able to look back 10, 20, you know, maybe 30 years from now and say, you know, and I'm glad I took that pause to be able to both refocus and recharge myself, but also maximize the time I spend with my kids when they're at a certain age. Yeah, I can imagine uh, so. And and uh, I, I've seen the hours you put in. I mean, you're putting in the daytime hours. You're also putting in a lot of weekend hours. You're attending events, the latest being uh, the high school tour, um, pandemic uh, at night, select board meetings, every other uh, type of meeting you can imagine. So you were putting in long hours and you do have a personal life. Do you have any idea where you want to go from here? You've hit a fork in the road now, uh, right or left? And what is it if it is right or left? So I, I mean, I, I know the kind of work I want to do and it might still be in local government or government, but I think as folks in town know, I'm, I'm very passionate about sustainability work. I'm passionate about finding ways to increase the affordability of housing for people living in the region. I'm passionate about race, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging. I'm passionate about those issues. And I hope that I can carve out and find an opportunity that either is in one, focuses very directly on one of those areas or finds a way to cross cut all of them. Um, and again, I, I'm not, I'm not like, I, I don't have a place that I'm going and I'm not, uh, I'm not so proud or arrogant to, to you know, kick anything, uh, kick anything aside before I know where, where my opportunities lie. So I, you know, I very well might find myself back in local government. Um, I think there's lots of nonprofits who do interesting and challenging work around the region. So I'm, I'm hopefully going to take this opportunity to, you know, to explore some of those things and, and to take, to take a line from a friend of mine who has been giving me some advice through this is, you know, some, sometimes you got to slow down to speed up. Mm -hmm. And I hope I hope that can be like a little bit of an opportunity here to to slow down. But, you know, I. I'm passionate about a lot of things and I want to have an impact on the world. Um, and, I, and I hope I'm able to find my way to do that. Well, you certainly had an impact here. Uh, when is your last day as town manager in Arlington? So I've told the board that I would stay on through June 17th. Um, so in some ways, it's a long goodbye. But, um, you know, my contract calls for a 90 day notice. Uh, notice through June 17th is just a little bit beyond that. And what I hope I can do is work with the town and the board to get through town meeting, get the FY23 budget adopted, and make sure we get a, as long into developing a transition plan as possible. Um, because it's it's important to me to make sure we're leaving the town in stable hands. Um, I know that you know the team working for the town today is second to none. So there are good hands, uh, you know, for the town to be left in. Um, the, the residents and those participating in boards, committees, and commissions are all outstanding. So there's, you know, there's a great team there as well. But yeah, I, I, I want to make sure we can wrap up, wrap up town meeting, wrap up the budget, and get get a transition plan in place. And then my plan would hopefully be to take some time over the summer and figure out what's next, and then reengage in something in September. I don't, you know, that's all, that's all, uh, if everything goes, goes to plan, right. And it go, goes to plan and saying, I don't exactly have a plan, but, um, that's in a perfect world, that would be how things shake out for me. Um, but I'll be taking some time to think about what's next and looking at some things that are, it might be out there and, you know, timelines may change after June 17th, but that would be my goal as I sit here today. Well, we'd like to follow the uh, trajectory of your career because we know it's uh, up so simply because of what uh, we'll you've done here for the town of Arlington. Year, um, what would you say were your greatest accomplish maybe. accomplishments here in town? I think I would say that the things, it's always hard to, to feel like you're bragging, right? And, I, and it's all, all been a team effort. But I think the thing I'm most proud of is the team of people that I've been able to partner with and work with here in Arlington. Um, and you know, if, if I'm gonna brag for a minute or be boastful, I, I think I've had the ability to recruit and retain a really good group of people to lead town departments. Um, and if I, you know, if I was gonna think, look back, you know, 10, 20 years from now, from a legacy point of view, I would, I would, I think I would look back and really be 
proud that I was able to surround myself with such an amazing group of passionate, hardworking folks. On a topical area, um, I think the area of work that I've been passionate about since I started here as deputy town manager in 2010, I remain passionate about and probably even more passionate about our issues of climate and sustainability. And I think the long list of things that we've been able to accomplish as a team from putting solar panels on school roofs to rolling out the Arlington Community Electricity Program to being part of the team that designed and is now building what will be an all electric and hopefully someday net zero high school, um, rolling out electric vehicles for town use and other things along that list, I think are among the things I'll, I'll be most proud of um, going into the future. I know, as you said, this is a long goodbye and uh, June 17th is uh, the date, it seem, seemingly your last day. What would you like to, to say to the people of Arlington? I mean, I would say to the people of Arlington first, foremost, and always thank you. Um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity that I've had here. Um, you know, being a kid who grew up in Fall River of, you know, meager, me meager means and, and uh, you know, <clears throat> lower middle class upbringing to have the opportunity to grow my career and, and work with the people I've worked with in Arlington will be, you know, it will, I think, always be the honor of my career, right? It has been an incredible 10 years as manager and, and a couple of years before that as deputy. And then going forward, you know, I've, I've said this, said this over the course of the past few years that I, Arlington is a wonderful place made up of wonderful people. And I hope, I hope the, all the folks involved can remember to go hard on the issues and easy on the people because we have tough issues before us, right? And there's, there's so many tough challenges that we've tackled and more tough challenges to come and tackling them is challenging, but we're all human. And that means that we have, that we make mistakes. We're not always right. And, but hopefully we're all doing our best to move things forward for the betterment of the community. So I don't, I don't think I coined the phrase, but I've been trying to use the phrase of, you know, go hard on the issues, easy on the people. And that way you can come, I think that is a roadmap to coming through hard issues still with adhesion as a community. As you heard, during his tenure, there were reports that Chapdelaine was possibly entertaining job offers in Vermont, North Attleboro, Natick, and more recently, Fall River. ACMI News will continue to follow Chapdelaine's announcement to resign as events warrant. It's a massive project that so far is on schedule and within budget, and phase one at Arlington's new high school is now officially complete. Town leaders and other dignitaries were on hand for the opening tour of the new Arlington High School building Monday, February 28th. With phase one in the rearview mirror, Arlington residents are now beginning to see an educational vision that has been eight years in the making. The first wings of the new Arlington High School opened on Monday, February the 28th, marking the official end of phase one of this massive project. Phase one dealt with a performing arts wing and the so-called STEAM wing, STEAM being an acronym for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Among other things, the new STEAM Wing includes 16 classrooms, 17 science labs, five visual arts studios, and a 120-seat discourse lab. The Performing Arts Wing contains band and chorus rooms, practice facilities, and a digital production lab. The chair of the AHS Building Committee, Arlington's former school superintendent, and our current town manager in Arlington all commend the Arlington community for its patience and ongoing support as this dramatic change to Arlington skyline continues. Here now is a sample of the Arlington High School tour, which featured several local and state dignitaries. At its heart, the new Arlington High School must support the best of what the AHS is doing now, as well as allow the development and implementation of effective and innovative future teaching and learning practices.
This feels great. I mean, the committee is just a great group of people. We are a dedicated group of volunteers that has put a lot of time into this effort. I'm very proud of many things that were accomplished during my tenure here, which was a superintendent 13 years. But this is certainly one of the most visible parts of it that will be long lasting, as you said, for you know, 50, 100 years. It's been a team effort. I've been happy to be part of the team. And I mean, it goes back five, six, even seven years. It's humbling, actually, because, you know, thousands of students will go into that building. And many of those students will go on to, all those students will go on to do great things in life. They'll make contributions. And so it's actually pretty humbling to play a real small role in creating a better life for lots of kids. Our thanks to ACMI's youth coordinator, Jasper Hamilton, for putting that report together. Arlington's town manager, Adam Chaplain, also wants to recognize that this new high school is the very first step in opening an all-electric facility that meets Arlington's net zero goals. Meantime, AHS principal Dr. Matthew Janger says he's ready to take the next step now to bringing this educational vision to life. An 880-plus seat auditorium complete with a 2140 square foot stage is expected to open sometime next month. And in the next phase of this major project, part of the old facility will be demolished in order to build the new humanities district administration and preschool wing. That phase is set to be complete September of next year. For ACMI News, I'm Jeff Barn. A routine traffic stop in town ends in the arrest of a 54-year-old Arlington man who faces drug and motor vehicle charges now. On Monday, February 28th, police say Keith Edward Lombardi was driving a pickup truck when he was pulled over in the area of River Street. Officers say Lombardi's registration sticker was stolen from another vehicle and placed on the pickup. Captain Richard Flynn from the Arlington PD picks up the story from there. He's been on our radar. Um and uh, we actually had an encounter with him less than probably a month ago, uh, kind of for the same thing. So uh, Mr. Lombardi is a guy who has been um, driving around the community. We, he, he's, he's got a suspended license. He has a propensity to uh, attach plates to vehicles and, and drive around. So our officers were aware of it. Uh, yesterday, uh, one of our sector officers, you know, doing, doing the right thing out there, being observant and whatnot, uh, sees a vehicle go by, sees... Mr. Lombardi behind the wheel, uh, <clears throat> a new uh, new Ford pickup truck with uh, license plates that come back to a, an older Mercedes. So, uh, you know, he, he stops the vehicle, he encounters Mr. Lombardi, uh, verifies that his license is in fact suspended. Mr. Lombardi's taken into custody. And then an inventory search uh, turns up a, a rather large quantity of marijuana and, and cash. So he's, he faces a litany of charges, including drug possession with intent to distribute, um, also unregistered, uninsured vehicle, from what I understand? Yeah, unregistered, uninsured, attaching plates. Uh, looks like he uh, took a uh, inspection sticker on, from one vehicle and put it on another vehicle. That's actually a felony in the state of Massachusetts, uh, not to mention the fact that he had over two pounds of marijuana that was uh, broken down into 12 baggies and a, uh, a bag full of cash that uh, didn't look like it just came from the bank. Uh, so, I, you know, I, everybody is uh, innocent until proven guilty, but uh, I think Mr. Lombardi's got some charges that he's going to need to answer to. I am assuming the police officer, the arresting police officer, uh, knew about this case, saw him, and just was suspicious based on what's happened in the past? Yeah. Yeah, actually, he was the officer who stopped him a month ago. And, um, Mr. Lombardi received a, uh, what we call a, uh, a complaint for that. So he actually wasn't taken into custody, but he was uh, summoned into court to answer for the operating uh, without a license and uh, the attaching plates and what have you. And uh, less than, I guess, a month later, he's out doing it again. So the officer sees him again. He knows he probably doesn't have his license. He verifies all this information, stops the vehicle. And, um, you know, that's how these things sometimes work. You know, we, we, we take pride that our officers are out there doing the right thing and, and being proactive. And uh, this is just a case of a, a good cop being observant, seeing something, making a car stop, and it leads into something a little bit more significant and, and concerning, to be honest with you, Jeff. 
Lombardi faces several charges, among them possession of marijuana with intent to distribute and operating an uninsured and unregistered vehicle. He was arraigned in Cambridge District Court and was released on his own recognizance. His next court date is set for May the 4th. An apparent drug sale leads to the arrest of an Arlington man. 20-year-old Ryan Darcy faces several charges, among them possession of marijuana with intent to distribute and carrying a firearm without a license. This week, Arlington police were investigating allegations of illegal drug sales to young people in town. Officers obtained social media information for a possible suspect, and while undercover, police say they made contact with Darcy and arranged to purchase marijuana. On Wednesday, March 2nd, Police say Darcy advised officers that he would meet them in the Thorndike Field parking lot on Margaret Street. Shortly after that, police say Darcy arrived in the parking area in a vehicle where he was taken into custody. After the arrest, police found more than 45 grams of marijuana, $240 cash, and a loaded 9mm handgun. As of this broadcast, Darcy is being arraigned in Cambridge District Court. What's happening with Arlington High School students this week? We return to our Studio B at Arlington High School for this week's Ponderscope. Hi, and welcome back to the Ponderscope. This week, the Performing Arts and Steam Wings opened Monday, February 28th, marking an important historic moment in the construction of the new Arlington High School. This included, among other things, over 800 new lockers, a discourse lab, music technology practice rooms, a band room, and 17 new science labs. The second phase of the construction, which will feature the library, cafeteria, and Monotomy Rocks Preschool, among other things, is already underway and is due to open September 2023 at the start of the next school year. In other news, the loss of the clubs have been sending in their pictures for the yearbook. Make sure to submit any candid photos of the school and email them to ahsyearbook at spyponders.com to be featured in the yearbook. They can be of sports, friends, clubs, classes, etc. Any inappropriate images will not be considered. Also, there's a new opportunity for visual artists on those interested in community service hours. Arlington Chamber of Commerce is looking for artists to come and paint windows of Arlington Heights businesses. Windows are a sign that a first come first serve basis, so answer quickly. If you're interested, use the link below to learn more and to reserve a window. Thank you for tuning in. Today's episode brought to you for the first time in our new studio, I'm Solidowski, and this has been The Ponderscope. Six members of Arlington's Rotary Club decided to go for a dip outside in freezing cold weather just a few days ago. Why? Well, let's just say there was a noble cause to all this madness. Here's ACMI News Director Jeff Barn. Not forsake me, oh my darling. Just a few minutes before high noon, Saturday, February 19th, the parking lot of St. Camillo's Church. Nearly two dozen people brave the cool chill of winter to watch these six people representing the Rotary Club of Arlington take on this icy cold dunk tank. Why are you doing this to yourself? Um, so uh, Rotary ha has a big mission to uh, eradicate polio, and um, we currently it's only in two other um, countries, and we are so close to eradicating it. So uh, not only does this bring awareness, but, uh, you know, hopefully some money for the cause. The money raised in this, the second annual Rotary Club Polar Dunk, goes toward getting polio vaccines to children abroad who desperately need them. And the folks here who raise the funds shamelessly did so by any means necessary. This year we just told people to come down and watch us suffer and we've got all sorts of people showing up today including you. It's a fun event and I, I raise money by telling people if they donate less than 25 they get a picture of me and my speedo. Wow that's and really And cool. I have always got my donations greater than 25. So the money is just pouring in. Yeah, it does. That Just that fear of getting a picture of me and a speedo scares the hell out of them. <laughs> Now, the Rotary Club of Arlington initially scheduled this event to take place on February the 5th, but a few people called in sick, so they decided to postpone it until today, February 19th. Now, on February the 5th, it was 13 degrees outside, 1-3. Today, February 19th, it's really balmy. 
It's 33 degrees, one degree over freezing, with winds coming from the north at 20 miles an hour. Why are these people doing this? I just really uh, feel like I'm uh, the leader of this club and should go first, so excited I, to get it out of the way. <laughs> Firstly, I think you're a masochistic person. Yes, that, yes. There yeah. you go. It is now high noon. The bells at St. Camillus peal. Time for these plucky dippers to plunge into the brutal and uncordial icy drink for a noble cause. Starting with Rebecca, the leadoff donkey. Ah, uh, she looks brave on the outside, but on the inside, you just know she's saying. Go! Five people were to follow in this quick frozen test of cardiac prowess, all showing grace under pressure on the outside. Despite the blood-curdling temps and the silent screams, Bill Hainer, Rebecca Harris, and their fellow plungers were steadfast in their commitment to get wet and freeze before the masses. This is a bona fide frozen. Because of the money raised today, the cold never bothered them anyway. All donations are matched two to one by the Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates. We've raised, I think, close to 5,000, and that'll bring it up to $15,000 uh, to fight polio. Afghanistan and Pakistan uh, are the only two countries left with it. With the new government there, uh, they are now going to allow uh, the people to come in and vaccinate the kids. So God willing, it'll be gone in the next five to 10 years. So for 2022, it's the Rotary Club of Arlington, six. The dunk tank, zero. But then again, there's always next year. For ACMI News, I'm Jeff Brown. And hats off to Bill Hainer and his fellow plungers who are steadfast in their commitment to get wet and freeze before the masses. That'll do it for this week's edition of ACMI News. Thanks for joining us. I'm Drew Weisberg. And I'm James Milan. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you next week. You can always check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ACMI News. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You'll find us at youtube.com slash ACMI News. If you have any news tips for us or wish to become a citizen journalist, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by ACMI Studio A at 85 Park Avenue.